of my Colorado Springs families. I'd like to tell you the story of Noah, a former Marine who served with honor in Iraq in 2009 and Afghanistan in 2011. I won't use his last name, but his parents have offered the use of his picture. So if I could just uh, show you Noah's picture. After leaving the Marine Corps, Noah began work on a business degree at the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs and started his own online business based out of Colorado Springs. Noah comes from a military family, his dad having honorably served for 23 years. Noah chose to put off college so he could serve this great nation. Unfortunately, his parents are appalled by the care that their son didn't receive from the VA. They believe their son would still be alive had he received care. Noah was diagnosed with PTSD and received a 50% disability due to PTSD. On April 2nd of this year, he went to the Colorado Springs VA clinic where medical notes from his visit state that he had suicidal thoughts or suicidal ideation specifically. Noah was prescribed a psychotropic drug, uh, Venla vaccine, and sent on his way. Now, we don't know at this time what this drug did or didn't do, but we do know this. He was not referred for suicide prevention. He was not offered counseling, and there was no follow-up from the VA. He went missing the evening of May 4th and was found dead from an apparent suicide May 12th of this year, a month ago. As you can imagine, his family is devastated. They are asking a lot of serious questions, so Dr. Clancy, I would like to ask you several questions on their behalf. Uh, why was their son, who had, docu who had been given documented, who had been documented with having suicidal thoughts or ideation, not referred to suicide prevention? Why wasn't there follow-up from the VA, and why wasn't he offered counseling? I will look into this personally, Mr. Congressman. Um, that's heartbreaking. I can't even imagine what this, I can't imagine, but I know it's horrendous what his family is going through. Um, the picture was worth many, many words. Uh, someone who did so much for this country, and I will look into that and get back to you on these, and to the family. Okay. Would one of the other witnesses um, have any response to my questions, to the family's questions? Uh, you know, as a psychiatrist who's treated veterans in clinics for 30 years, uh, it's hard to understand the, the report that we're given, and, and yet these seem to be the facts that are available. We have to look into it. My first thought is that uh, I want to make sure this family's been reached out to directly and that we have a chance to collect this information. As I say, we've created a system. A system can be cold and inhuman, but we need to have a real sit down with them and understand everything that happened from their point of view, questions that they have which may torture them. Uh, and we will work with them to do that. Okay. Th thank you both. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you for having this hearing, and I yield back the balance of my time. Mr. O'Rourke, Texas. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Clancy, uh, a, a question to which I'd like to receive a, a quick direct answer. Um, we're, we're touting uh, reduced prescriptions of opioids uh, as though perhaps that in itself is success. What I'd like to know are the, the consequences. Um, I have veterans who show up to my town hall meetings saying that their prescriptions were cut off without notice, without transition, without ramping down. How many of those who are no longer receiving prescriptions from the VA are now using heroin or other street drugs? We can't know that without, um, with the information that we have. It is something we worry about constantly. So let me tell you another problem. This is just hopefully helpful feedback for you from El Paso. Mm -hmm. Others who have prescriptions are required to renew those prescriptions after a monthly visit uh, with their prescriber. They're unable to get the appointment in El Paso to see the prescriber, so they cannot get the prescription renewed. So they go without, or they go with something that they shouldn't have that perhaps they buy on the street, and at a minimum they're suffering. And in some cases, I would connect that suffering to suicides that we see uh, in El Paso. Uh, I'd also like to give you the, the following feedback. Um, as I shared with you when I met with you on Monday, uh, the May 15th access report from the VA shows that El Paso is ranked 157th 
out of 158 for mental health care access. We have 115 mental health care positions approved for El Paso. Only 87 of those are filled, leaving a 24 percent vacancy rate. Uh, your predecessor, uh, when we would relay anecdotal information uh, that I was hearing from veterans told me we were seeing everybody within 14 days. As you know, we did our own survey in El Paso, found that more than one-third of veterans could not get a mental health care appointment, not in 14 days, not a month, just not ever. That situation, because we're surveying the veterans again right now and we're receiving the responses back, has not improved uh, in the year that we've had uh, new leadership there. Th this is, should be for you a, a five alarm fire. Uh, I have met with the widows and the mothers of suicides in El Paso uh, far too often. Uh, and I'm continuing to do that, and I just did the last time that I, was, that I was home in El Paso. As you know, for whatever reason, the VA has been unable to solve this issue and to treat it as a priority that it should be and to turn around El Paso. I'm glad to hear that there are uh, good things happening in other parts of the country, but everything that I do and view is through the prism of the veterans that I serve in El Paso. Uh, you know that we have a proposal from the community in El Paso to address this. Uh, I want your commitment that you're going to work with us because the community has come forward in the vacuum of VA leadership and action and will and resources to do the right thing. Uh, I will do whatever it takes to work with you and your team and the secretary to get this implemented, but this is a crisis that has deadly repercussions for the veterans that we all serve in El Paso. And I want to make sure, because we didn't take it seriously over the last year because our statistics and our vacancy and our position relative to mental health access is actually worse than it was a year ago. I want your commitment that you're going to work with me to resolve this, that it is a crisis for you, that it is urgent for you, and that we're going to turn this around. You have my wavering commitment. Uh, we were very impressed with uh, your reaching out and bringing in various members of the El Paso community to work with us. Um, and I want to thank you for your support of our employees during what was uh, a different kind of tragedy at the El Paso facility uh, several months ago, uh, something that cut to the heart of uh, clinicians across the country, but particularly to those uh, serving veterans in El Paso. You have my full commitment. Thank you. I yield back. That's not enough. These veterans have been doing the same thing over and over. We've been told that you're committed, and we don't see any results. We see nothing. You can't even answer the comments and give them. Okay, sir, I'm sorry, you're out of order. Uh, you're out of order. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Beneshek, uh, Michigan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I want to associate myself with the comments of Mr. O'Rourke, for one thing, and that is, uh, I've seen this as well, is that the, the goal seems to be cutting down the amount of narcotics, and, and the, the same circumstances uh, happen in my district, too, where people have just had their prescriptions cut off with no alternative treatment figured out. It's been a real problem. I, there's a couple of specifics I want to get to um, after that, and, and that is something Dr. Cudler said, and then something Mr. Williamson said, and that Mr. Williamson said there's not that much, doesn't seem to be that much follow-up on this behavioral health autopsy program, or are we learn, learning anything for it? Can you can you remind me what you said in your testimony, Mr. Williamson? Because it, it's we contradicting what Dr. Cudler said. We were talking about oversight, very little oversight of that program at the local or the the um, national level. To